Hi, everyone. My name is Eric Emler. I am the Youth Academy Director here at uh, Waxhaw Soccer Club. Um, as of late, I've been getting a, a number of questions talking about uh, the different options that are out there, the, the, the so-called pathways, which we'll talk about in this presentation. Um, this and, and over the years, I've uh, fielded uh, a number of questions on the same topic. So I put together a presentation for you that I want to share with you. Um, hopefully, this makes some sense. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll get after it. It, it. My hope is that you ask more questions from this. It's just going to be a snapshot. We're going to race through it. Um, and we'll determine if it's a, a conversation offline or it's something we want to meet on um, at another time to discuss in a little bit more depth through another meeting of some sort. But uh, first slide here is uh, Youth Soccer Developmental Pathway, a conversation. OK, uh, I'm going to start off with a with a, a, um, share a story with you about my son. Uh, my son was a is a, uh, a, a pretty talented player. Um, you know, we had him in the youth academy at Waxhaw Soccer Club years and years ago. He's now a freshman in college. Um, we ended up at CSA for a number of years. Um, uh, he was a pretty good player. He played on the in the ECNL program. But what I learned was there's a there's a, a deviation. There's ECNL, which is for the national level players, and there's a RL, ECRL, which is regional level players. Well, um, he was a regional level player. Um, he was not a national level player. Um, the other thing we learned was we he spent about three years with the same coach. We really liked the coach, um, but the coach. I had a conversation with him over the years just about how. Um, I didn't feel my son was going to have the size of the prototypical 6'1", 6'2", 6'3", central defender uh, that's prevalent in, in college, Division One, college, Division Two, even Division Three college soccer. Um, therefore, I wanted to see him be utilized as, as a, a player in a different position. Uh, he ultimately made the decision to do what was best for the team. He said uh, that my son was... Uh, one of the more confident players building out of the back, his decision-making and his, 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 his passing technique and decision-making was um, uh, the decision was made to um, do what was best for the team in order to get results as opposed to um, developing him to play at the next level uh, as the as you get higher and higher up the pyramid, winning becomes more of um, a necessity. So that was the decision that was made. We kept him at the club simply because he had developed some friendships. He was in a pretty good group and he was comfortable. So um, that was the decision we made. He enjoyed his time, but ultimately he decided not to play his final season um, and, and chose just to play high school soccer and represent his school team uh, versus his club team, which I thought was a very interesting decision and one I supported. Um, you know, but in the end, his, his, uh, his target shifted. Uh, that is my why story. It may turn out to be a similar story for your young player over time. Uh, it may be miles, uh, miles away from that. Who knows? The next slide, um, Charlotte area players. As you can see from this, there's a lot of options right here in Charlotte. I would say from center to uptown in a 25 to 30 mile radius, these are all the different options, youth soccer clubs, you could choose to be a part of within uh, that tight of radius. So unbelievable amount of options right here in Charlotte. Um, different pathways offered by uh, a lot of these guys. So it, it, it proves to be a, perhaps a, 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 a complicated road ahead. No matter which option you choose, um, I refer to them as the soft skills, right? Uh, they'll be, uh, they'll have an opportunity to be very physically fit, mentally strong, learn to manage their time a little bit better, take on responsibility, uh, develop qualities of being a leader, um, 
I, I would imagine they would be in pressure pack situations that they'll have to learn to cope with, uh, develop some grit and how to compete and, and hopefully have a growth mindset. No matter which club you choose, uh, whether it's to stay here in Waxo or, or move on, whatever it might be, I would like to believe that any and every club we've discussed or, or put on that previous slide would help develop your young player in all of these areas. The pathways, all right, this is probably the meat of the presentation here. Um, we're at the bottom, at the youth level. You're on this road and depending on what your aspirations are, what your child's aspirations are, what they wanna be, will dictate or, or help determine the path in which you choose to move. Um, you've got US club soccer, US youth soccer, ECNL, MLS next. There's uh, branches off these main arteries or these main roads within each one of these organizations as well, but um, let's try and keep it simple. Um, your young player may have aspirations of playing on their middle school team or may have aspirations of representing their, their local school, their high school, um, and being a part of their soccer program. That might be uh, the goal, right? And if so, um, you know, there's some things you might have to take into consideration. One of the things we found is um, along the way, the high school coach placed a big emphasis on club soccer and what youth club uh, the kids on his team represented. If they weren't from a big club, maybe they didn't get consideration in a given year to be on that high school team. Um, it's probably going to differ. From, from school to school, but this is something that you, you may come up against. Um, if, if the aspirations are to play in, in college, um, I, I'm not saying there's one road that you need to be on in order to guarantee that you'll get there. The, the, the odds and the, the numbers uh, of kids going to school and earning a scholarship or playing at their college program, uh, like I said, the, the higher you get to the top of the pyramid, the, the slimmer the chances become and the, 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 uh, the fewer and fewer opportunities there are. Next slide, uh, U.S. club soccer. You can see all of these clubs that are represented on this slide are, slide is, or are a part of the U.S. club soccer affiliation. Um, their affiliation is a little bit different than USYS, a little different than being uh, selected as an ECNL program, and uh, obviously different than being uh, selected as an MLS Next club. Um, they're all going to basically say the same thing. They're dedicated to development. Um, they want to put their your, your young players in the right environment to develop and become better. Uh, they're going to instill various standards and rules, uh, so on and so forth. But I think every single organization is basically going to say the same thing. Um, USU soccer. Um, this is what I played growing up. When I, when I was growing up, there was no U.S. club. There was no ECNL. There was no development academy. Uh, there was no MLS next. None of that stuff existed. Everybody was a part of U.S. soccer's youth soccer affiliation you all represented your your local club your club played against other clubs that were nearby you uh you eventually did, in the spring season you got into the state tournament in which all of these clubs competed in a tournament format to become the state champion the country was divided into four regions your east your south your midwest and your west if you won your state championship you would go play in a tournament with other state champions within your region to determine a regional champion. And then you went from there to become a uh, play the other regions in a, in a, a, a tournament to determine the national champion. That is how it's been for a long, long time within U S youth soccer. Um, but with ECNL, with MLS next, with U S club soccer, uh, all of these organizations and affiliations want to think that they can 
uh, put their own clever spin on it, do it in a different way, maybe in a better way than the other organization. And that's why we have all of these different pathways. Um, ECNL, as you can see from the map, ECNL is an affiliation where they are hand picking uh, specific clubs throughout the country uh, to compete in a league. So within the city of Charlotte, we're fortunate enough to have two um, ECNL clubs, Charlotte Soccer Academy, Charlotte Independence. Um, you also have uh, the, the North Carolina Fusion, which is out of the um, uh, Greensboro area. You also have NCFC and NC Courage, which is in Raleigh. And then you have out of the beach, you have Wilmington Town, South Carolina, you have CESA, and you have South Carolina United out of Columbia. Um, but as you can see from the map here, um, not a whole lot of clubs in a three state area. So if you choose to be part of the ECNL program, you're, you're going to plan to travel quite a bit. And if you're planning to travel quite a bit, it's a massive time commitment as well as a financial commitment. So depending on your pathway, kind of know what you're getting into or what you're choosing to take a bite out of the apple. And so um, that's ECNL. And then MLS Next. MLS Next is um, another very selective uh, affiliation. Um, Charlotte FC is our MLS next representative within the city of Charlotte. They are basically coming to find you, right? So if you are good enough, they will find you. Uh, they will invite you in to be part of their development program. This usually starts at about U14. Um, um, the difference there is with U.S. club clubs, with USYS clubs, and with ECNL clubs, the family is paying the bill. Within MLS Next and Charlotte FC, the club is paying the bill. So your child is playing for free. They're getting on planes. They are playing at a very high level. They're training every day. Um, it's, it's, um, it's a lot. So anyway, that is the uh, four or five different options. Which option is best? Uh, mission statements are gonna be somewhat similar. Uh, which league is best. It really depends on the goal of your young player and how committed they are to the game, what level they want to attain. Um, it's, it's complicated. It's hard to answer as a very, very young player, but um, the purpose of this presentation was just to kind of expose you to all that is out there. Um, my answer to this slide is always going to be the same. It has been for a long, long time. and It's more true today than it ever has been. It's less about the club, it's more about the coach. Um, just imagine the scenario, you have more and more youth soccer clubs coming online every single day with more and more clubs having very similar visions, right? They all want to be everything to everyone. They wanna offer every single level. They wanna have multiple teams. They wanna have boys, they wanna have girls, they wanna have, you know, a youth academy all the way up to U18, U19. It's, it's a business. Um, so it seems like most clubs are trying to be as much as they can to as many people as they can be. Therefore, you need more and more coaches. Well, while there are a lot of good coaches out there, um, it seems with the, uh, the, the growing number of clubs, and the, the ever expanding number of teams, finding good quality coaches is proving to be more and more of a challenge. Therefore, when you get into a setup, you might be with the club that on paper looks like it's gonna take you to uh, Taj Mahal, but in the end, you don't have a coach that is necessarily in line with your, uh, your family, your young players, um, aspirations um and, and it might not be a good fit um you know the other thing the other point i made here is consistent club curriculum i've seen this over the years where i'm in the youth academy i've been living in the youth academy world for years and years and years and i have a certain way of seeing things and how i want the game to be taught to young players but my question has always been what am i passing them on to 
who is the next coach? Do they see the game the same way I do? And am I serving this player in the right way to give them the, the foundation to go on to uh, be successful at the next level? That doesn't always happen because the communication within uh, the club and the staff is not, it never happens. <laughs> it never happens because we're so in the weeds of doing our thing. Maybe it's working our day job and then racing to the field and then racing to our family after a long day and then rinse and repeat day in and day out. We don't have a meeting space or a place where it's easy to get together. It's not mandated to us from the club um, and all of these things lead to an erosion of, uh, that consistency from year to year, from age group to age group, from, uh, you, you know, from, from, uh, from, from year to year. And you, you may end up confusing the player over time because one philosophy doesn't line up with the next one curriculum doesn't line up with the next so on and so forth. So, um, finding that good coach holding on to that good coach for as long as you can um, is so important to this whole mess. Um, I can't stress it enough. This presentation I'm sure uh, has probably um, uh, forced you into a few questions of your own. I am happy to take whatever time uh, you'd like to take via phone call or email or grab me at the fields. Happy to talk this through. I probably don't have all the answers. I will dig and find the answers if I don't. Um, but um, I'll raise my hand and, and hopefully be a sounding board for you and hopefully uh, guide you in whatever way I can uh, to answer your questions. I hope this has been beneficial and helpful in some way, shape or form. Um, and I look forward to talking to you again. All right. Thank you.